Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where I show off a cool PowerShell module each Monday. This Monday, we're looking at a PowerShell module called PS Depend. PS Depend is a simple, simple PowerShell dependency handler. Uh, it's kind of based on bundle, dot, or bundle install in the Ruby world and pip install requirements in the Python world. So the idea is that we can kind of define uh, requirements in a psd1 file, and then psd uh, ps depend will actually go through and install those requirements, um, validate those requirements are installed, and that kind of thing. Um, it's really good for setting up development environments, um, installing PowerShell modules, and that kind of thing. Um, so to install ps depend, you can just get it from the PowerShell gallery by using install module ps depend. So I have ps depend installed, um, and here's an example of a very basic um, psd1 file, uh, kind of a requirements file for ps depend. Um, by default, uh, the hash table that you define for your requirements will uh, use uh, kind of a uh, dependency type of PowerShell module, and will install these PowerShell modules based on the uh, value, which is the version then for each one of the items in this hash table. So the top four items here are four different PowerShell modules. Two of them are pinned to the, or are set to the latest version, and then two of them are pinned to specific versions, um, so that you can kind of specify which version of that PowerShell module you'd like. Finally, this last uh, dependency down here uh, is actually a Git repository, so it'll actually clone that Git repository to the current folder um, and use the master branch in this case. Um, so what you can actually do is you can use ps depend to read these psd1 files. So if I hit F8 on here, you'll see that it read out uh, all five of those dependencies. Um, you can see that some of them specify versions, some of them are using the latest version, and um, each one of them is uh, kind of denoting the dependency type that uh, is defined via the syntax inside of this psd1 file. Um, and you can see here that uh, we have four ps gallery module dependency types and then one github dependency type. If you want to know what types of dependencies are supported by ps depend, you can use get ps depend type and select the ps dep or the dependency type uh, property. So here's a list of all the dependency types that are currently supported. Uh, we have things like chocolatey, file downloads, uh, whether file system um, things exist, github, um, packages, and then ps gallery modules, that kind of thing. Um, so these are extensible. Um, they're very similar to DSC resources in that they need get, set, and test. Um, and then you kind of define them as PowerShell scripts inside um, a PS depend type folder. Um, so they have examples of how to do that out on the gallery. I won't get into that, but I'll talk a little bit about how to use um, these resources. So um, a, a very basic resource. Um, kind of looks like this. So this is kind of like the most basic resource that you could create. Um, in this case I'm specifying uh, three PowerShell modules. We have um, we have Pester, Selenium, and PS Depend, and I want them all on the latest version. Um, the, mo the most basic thing we can do is actually uh, just test to see if those exist. So I have the um, Selenium and the PS Depend module installed, um, but I don't have the latest uh, Pester v5 module installed, so that one's going to return false. So we can actually go and check and see which of those modules are actually installed. Um, if you want to get a little more specific with requirements, what you can do actually do is you can uh, define what type of um, Kind of what type of dependency these particular items are by using the syntax that you see here. So I have a PS gallery module, I want to install the universal module, and I have a GitHub repository where I want to install the universal templates. So um, to invoke that, all I have to do is, um, in this case I can move over to this folder and call invoke uh, PS depend and um, just say all on that, and what it's going to do is uh, it's going to download the module from the PowerShell gallery, and then it's going to clone the Git repo. Um, and what I've done is I've actually specified some PS depend options. So you can kind of think of these as global options to each one of the dependencies. So this actually sets the target parameter for each one of my dependencies, and I want to store it inside uh, the, the dependencies folder here and I want to pretty much call force on each one of the dependencies. 
So now that that's run, what you'll see is that I actually have uh, the universal module in here. Um, that was, you know, saved via save module. And then I have um, a cloned version of the universal templates um, GitHub repository. So um, that's kind of like a more specific way of defining dependencies um, for PS depend. Um, in addition to um, just kind of listing dependencies like this, what we can actually do is have them run in order. So um, here's an example of three different tasks and um, each one of these depend, or two of them depend on the previous task to run. Uh, so I have task one, two, and three. Um, you can see I, I have them kind of out of order um, to, to prove that uh, I can run them in order by using the depends on property. So depends on pretty much allows you to define that the previous, or this, this step requires this step to um, complete before it will actually execute. So task one doesn't have any dependencies. Task two uh, depends on task one, and then task uh, three depends on task two. So uh, there are uh, some interesting things to note in this file besides just the depends on. The other thing is that, uh, notice here that I'm using the uh, PWD variable here. Um, one interesting thing to note about uh, PS depend is that they will um, kind of expand the uh, couple special variables for you. Um, as you may notice, uh, this string is not an expandable string. So if I were to actually take this string and put it in here, you'd see it would just print out uh, PWD and not expand it to an actual um, location. But what PS depend will do is will it will say like PWD is the current folder that I am in. So um, if I actually go over to uh, this depends folder and then invoke uh, PS depend, it's actually going to expand that and find those scripts in this folder for me. Um, so just one thing to note when using um, PS depend. So uh, if you do, because uh, one of the reasons that they have to do that this way is that um, PowerShell data files, these PSD1 files, do not allow you to use things like PS script in them. So that's why they have to expand PWD um, in this way. So just note that um, you should not use double quotes if you're trying to use the PWD variable, you should use single quotes. So I am gonna run this and we're gonna allow that. And now you can see that we went script three, two, one. Um, Cause task one ran script three, task two ran script two, and then uh, task three ran script one. So we went down the list there, and um, it ran the dependencies in order. Uh, if you want to get a little more flexible in, I'm actually going to delete this folder so that I can prove this. Um, if you want to get a little more flexible in the way that you define dependencies, you can actually use um, kind of an extended syntax. So I've, I show this a little bit, but uh, it gets a little more, um, I, I guess, extensible. Um, there are a lot uh, more properties that you can actually set into your hash tables for each one of your dependencies. So you saw some things that I set um, in previous examples, such as the depends on, the target, the dependency type, that kind of thing. Um, but in this case, you can specify things like uh, the name of the dependency, parameters to the actual um, dependency type script that's running. Um, in this case, it's going to be the install module, um, I guess, uh, commandlet and then things like version and tags. And uh, if you look at invoke PS depend, you're gonna see things like the tags. So you could specify uh, dependencies for just a particular prod or test environment, that kind of thing. Um, and if you actually use uh, get dependency, you'll see things like version. So if we were to come over to flexible and do get dependency, you'll see that this dependencies version is 5.5 .5, and that's actually coming from uh, the hash table right here. Um, additionally, you can see the tags. So uh, in this example, I have some options that I'm setting. Each one of these is gonna store into the dependencies folder. I'm uh, adding the force parameter to everything. Um, I'm gonna install the find open file module. Then I'm gonna install the PowerShell Pro Tools module. I'm going to do things like skip the publisher check, uh, make sure the repository is set to the PS gallery. If you had a custom repository, you could set it there. Um, and then I'm actually going to run a script. So if we were to call invoke ps depend on this and force, I think I have to call 
install to make sure that open ps script pad runs and um, you'll see that I had this module installed um, find open files was installed and then it actually opened ps script pad which is what this open script did so there's kind of like a bunch of different ways that you can um, configure your uh, pretty much requirements files um, and it's pretty flexible. I think it's very similar to kind of some things that you may see with DSC, but I think this is uh, a little more simple than that. Um, and it all runs as just a basic PowerShell module. Um, and it's a great way to kind of set up uh, a build environment or a new project or something like that. Someone could just run um, invoke PS depend and it would install things like Pester and Selenium, um, invoke build, things like that, whatever you might need um, for your uh, development environment or you know your PowerShell um, module build that kind of thing so in this video we actually looked at uh, the module PS depend and saw how that we can install different dependencies um, we can schedule different dependencies based on other dependencies and we can use some flexible options to define lots of parameters around the dependencies that are being installed so if you like videos like this definitely subscribe to my channel because I'll be releasing a new module Monday every Monday thanks